Next story I want to talk about is about a guy named Josh Bernstein. I've talked about him a few times before. In fact, I think the last time I talked about him was late September, around the time that this clip that we're about to watch came from. So I wanted to introduce you to him or reintroduce you to him because it's been a while since I talked about him and there's some new information, some new clips that just came out about him. He's basically a far far right-wing commentator. He's like a political commentator, and he's also extremely religious, and he has some very, very disturbing views about the other side, how what he calls the other. He obviously has an us-versus-them mentality to a disturbing degree, which you'll come to see in a minute. Let's give this clip a watch. Everything, folks, is on the line. Everything. Now, I will end it with this. If, God forbid, they figure out how to steal this election, the only thing that's going to save this country is revolution. And trust me, it will happen. Uh, There's no question about it. And when it happens, we will have a new America. Yes, there will be blood spilled, unfortunately, but... They're bringing it upon us. That one may actually be from before the election. Based on the context, I think it was. I thought for sure it was from September. But anyways, obviously the guy has a violent streak in him that he desperately wants to let out. And sadly, he has a pretty fucking big audience. Although he was kicked off of a bunch of social media networks recently, including but not limited to Patreon. They kicked his ass off. He was on Roku and everything. He had like his own Roku app. Seriously, you open your Roku, you know, the streaming box thing, and right there is an app that says, I don't remember what it's called, a Josh Bernstein Uncensored or whatever, the Josh Bernstein Show. I don't remember what the name of it was. But anyways, he had his own Roku app. He was making fat stacks. Seriously. This guy is not a nobody. And then he got kicked off of all these platforms similar to Alex Jones. And, just like Alex Jones, created his own website with a membership program. And you have to pay like a dollar to watch his shows now on his, like behind his paywall. Which is actually a really good idea. If he has an audience of, you know, 500,000 or... So I'm guessing that's roughly what it is, 500,000. And only 50,000 of them follow over to a dollar per month subscription. One-tenth of your audience follows you over. That is so much fucking money. 50 grand a month if it's just a dollar per person. That is a lot of fucking money. So needless to say, he's extremely popular and he has some extremely disturbing views to spread to the world. And I think he's doing just fine now, despite the fact that he's been kicked off of most platforms. Anyway, let's listen to the next clip. I just want to give you a clear idea of exactly who this guy is. This was from late October 2020. Check it out. They steal this from Trump. Trust me on that. Okay. Yeah. If they steal this from Trump, there's 65 plus million Americans thirsting for revenge. Let me say this. To the hard left Marxists out there, to the Antifa, to the Black Lives Matter, to the left wing groups that are funding him, to the right wing watches, to all those people out there, we are ready, willing, and able to do what we have to do to protect this nation and to make sure that this country is never going to be a communist nation. And if it's an us versus situation, trust me, it's going to be them, not us. Right. It should never be viewed as like an us versus them type of situation. Holy shit, man. This guy's us versus them mentality is just a disturbing sight to behold. And what was it, What was going on in the background with this guy grunting and stuff? What was that? Able to do what we- Why is this dude grunting? Holy shit, I can't believe I scrolled like randomly into the middle of this clip and just so happened to be right at the grunt. Anyways, uh, let me get back to the beginning of this one because I wanted to point something else out. Hold on. Trust me on that, okay? Yeah. If they steal this from Trump, there's 65 plus million Americans thirsting 
for revenge. Yeah, 65 plus million Americans. This is before the election actually took place, before the voting took place. I find it super interesting that he pegged 65 million as roughly the number of people who are going to be voting for Trump. That may be because that's roughly how many Trump got in the previous election. I'm not really sure, but Either way, this guy went on to claim that Donald Trump got like 100 million votes or some ridiculous nonsense. Those 65 million voters that he was referencing, those people aren't die-hard Trump supporters to the bottom of their hearts like this guy is. These people are not ready to commit violence or whatever like this guy is, like he's encouraging. Those are just Average, everyday, run-of-the-mill voters who go to the voting booth, check the box, and hand the thing in, and then go back to their day job, and that's about it. So he's vastly over-representing the size of the movement, of his extremist movement. But I don't want you guys to think that I'm downplaying the power that it has. Have you ever heard of the Three Percenters movement? It's this group, it's, it's a group of extremists, the three percenters, far-right activists who believe that it would only take 3% of the country to mobilize, to take it over in a fascist takeover, essentially. So if there are like 325 million people in the U.S. right now, multiply that by 3%, that gets you to about a million people, give or take. I think the U.S.'s standing army is only 1 million to 1.5 million, somewhere in there. So if they actually did mobilize 3% of the country, that may actually be all that it would take to really wreck things. Not to mention the fact that they'd be taking some of them from the U.S.'s military. I don't want you guys to think there's no bite behind this guy's bark. It is something we should be concerned about. But he is one of the more kind of out there in la-la land types of people. I just wanted to give you an idea of who he was before we continued on and saw the next clips. Check this next one out. This came out early September 2021. He actually has a solution to resolve the issue as he views it with the Democrats. Give this a listen. I think that we should have a permanent ban on delivering goods and services into big, blue, dominant, liberal cities in America. I think that the truckers should boycott big, blue cities in California, New York, and Chicago, and, you know, in Houston, and, you know, everywhere else that, you know, Detroit, anywhere where there are tons of registered Democrats, and I would do it, honestly, by zip code. So in other words, I'm sure these groups that are forming can get a hold of voter registrations in some of these big cities and cities that are dominated with Democrats. We need to squeeze them dry. You get nothing. You get nothing delivered. You get no food. You get no shelter. You get no water. You get no supplies. You get nothing until this illegal administration, this treasonous dictatorship steps down they're not supposed to be there in the first place because they stole their power they did not earn their power people did not vote for these scumbags and therefore they are illegitimate that is so far into delusion i don't even know where to go with it not only is it completely delusional and i do not use that word lightly not only is it completely delusional but it's fucking dangerous to talk about this this guy is is essentially saying he wants to basically take political office back for the republicans or take out the democrats in the process that's basically what he wants right am i reading this correctly that's fucking concerning and this guy is not a nobody he has a gigantic show people listen to him i do find it Kind of amusing, though, that he's got this idea that he's going to basically starve out Democrat cities, where in reality, the Democrat cities, as he's calling them, are subsidizing the Republican cities. Uh, All of the rural areas in the U.S. are being fed tax money and food and all of this economic growth and stability by the big cities. 
that are controlled by Democrats. Isn't that interesting? This guy has no idea how much his life really does hinge on the success of Democrat cities, quote unquote. Check this one out. This is mid-December 2021. This one is a newer clip. Give it a watch. Trump won a landslide, okay? It was 410 electoral votes to 128, if you want to know exactly the numbers. Where did he come up with that? What was it? 410 to 128? It was 410 electoral votes to 128. Wow. Okay. Where did he get those numbers from, I'm wondering? Which states did he claim for Donald Trump? Do you think he moved California over to Donald Trump on his little electoral map? I bet he did. Every time I watch like the most extreme of the most extreme political commentators on the right, for some reason they have this weird obsession with the idea that Donald Trump won California secretly, but the Democrats in California took the state back for Biden or some other nonsense. I don't know what their obsession is with California. Not just that, but Donald Trump during the election said, New York is in play. We're going to win New York. Yeah, fucking right. You cannot be serious. These states are packed with people who vote blue traditionally. There is basically a 0% chance of these states going red at this point. It's 60, 65, 70% blue. There's no chance of it. But just keep on living in that delusion. Again, I don't say that word lightly. The people that I look at are seemingly disconnected from reality, and I don't know what to do with them. Like, I don't know where to go with this. Like, how do we grapple with this bizarre fucking belief system, this bizarre ideology that they seem to have adopted? Let's keep listening. It was 410 electoral votes to 128, if you want to know exactly the numbers, okay? No. He absolutely crushed it in his second term. They just kept him from being able to serve, all right? No, no, give me evidence for this. If you're making a claim, give me some evidence. All the evidence is on my side of the table here. You have nothing to back up what you're claiming, nothing. If you have evidence of voter fraud or whatever, bring it to a court, sue somebody over it. If you have evidence, show it. Show it to somebody. I'm not seeing it on screen anywhere. Bottom line, Arizona, he won by a minimum of 400,000 votes. He won Georgia by a minimum of 200,000 votes, probably even more than that. Uh, New Hampshire, he won by 125,000 to 150,000 votes. Wisconsin, he won by 200,000 minimum in Wisconsin. And Michigan, he won by at least 350 to 400,000 votes. And of course, Pennsylvania, he won by at least 750,000 to as many as over a million votes. Clearly, this was a landslide victory. Where is he even getting this? Where did he get those numbers from? Is there something to back this up? Anything at all? Is there some documentation? Is there some expert coming out and explaining how you got to those numbers? Are you just making them up? I mean, a lot of the time he was saying at least blah, blah, blah. He wasn't giving us an exact number. So he's just estimating, I assume. Trump won by at least blah, 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 up to a million. Why use that kind of verbiage if you're not just fucking guessing? It's just bizarre. This whole thing is fucking bizarre. Anyway, this next clip comes out early November 2021, so shortly before the last clip we watched. Give this a listen. I believe that Glenn Youngkin won his race somewhere between 20 and 30 points. Okay, a little context on this. Glenn Youngkin was the gubernatorial candidate for the Republicans in Virginia. So he was running for governor against the Democrats, and he won. He actually did. He won by just a couple of points. It was a very narrow margin, and it was a hard-fought battle, but he did win by just a couple of points. So uh, now Josh Bernstein's going to come in and tell us why Youngkin actually won by a lot more than we think he did. Let's give it a listen. But I believe that Glenn Youngkin won his race somewhere between 20 and 30 points. And the only way I can prove that is if he does a forensic audit. Okay, for the record, I don't deal in beliefs or ideas. 
or opinions, I deal in facts and logic. I guess I espouse my opinion on the show, but it's I try to base it on facts and logic. This guy has made it clear that he has some beliefs that can't be proven without this thing happening that is absolutely never going to happen. So I guess we're at an impasse now. I don't believe you. Prove it. Give me some evidence, anything at all. Until you give me evidence, I have no reason to believe a word out of your mouth. I can prove that is if he does a forensic audit, which he should do because he's worth a ton of money. So he could pay for it himself. He doesn't need the Patriots. He doesn't need anyone else in Virginia to do it. He can do it himself. Yeah, I don't know how much money uh, Youngkin has, but do you have any idea how much it costs to do a recount, especially like a full-blown forensic audit? It costs a lot of fucking money. Millions of dollars. Millions. A lot of Youngkin's money is probably tied up in um, is probably tied up in stocks and bonds and stuff. He can't just liquidate that shit and spend it like on the spot. He would have to spend time selling off his stocks and transferring it, paying taxes on it because he hasn't paid taxes on unrealized gains. So the moment he sells all that stock, he has significantly less than he did before he sold it. The dude probably doesn't have anywhere near as much as Josh Bernstein seems to believe he does. And on top of that, I'm not even sure why somebody would spend their own money on an audit anyways. He's the governor. He can just push for a forensic audit. But again, why would he? He won the election by a, a narrow margin. What evidence or reason would he have to push for an audit for an election that he won anyways? Himself. And I know what you're thinking. Well, Josh, you won. Why do you care? Because we need forensic audits on every race moving forward. Why? Because I can tell you right now that in 2020, 300,000 votes just miraculously appeared for Joe Biden in the middle of the night. Not true. They were counting and they did push through a bunch, a couple hundred thousand votes for Joe Biden. But guess what? Donald Trump got votes added to his tally simultaneously. They were both getting votes added to their counts. Joe Biden didn't just get 300,000 out of nowhere and Donald Trump stayed at zero. That's not how it worked. There's a system called Decision Desk HQ, I think. It's a website. And they have this API, right? An API is like a, a program that interacts with a database and a website. It pulls information from a database and it sends it to the website so that you can view it. E essentially, in layman's terms, that's what this API was doing. And there was a, a weird error on the API that displayed, or maybe on the front end of the website, that displayed a number incorrectly and made it look like Biden had more votes than he actually did have. But the data in the database was uncorrupted and correct. All they had to do was fix the little error on decision desk that was showing the data, and it was fixed just like that. The count was always accurate, it just wasn't being displayed accurately at that moment because of some weird programmatical error. That is the only event that anybody can point to that was even remotely questionable about when the voting was happening. There was nothing like big ballot dumps that came at 3 in the morning of 300,000 votes and Trump got none added to his roster. That's not how it happened. That's just complete bullshit. But he believes it. Of course, he believes it. Big surprise. Joe Biden in the middle of the night, which took the lead away from Trump. Trump won Virginia square and fair and by a lot. Virginia has traditionally been um, a mostly Democratic stronghold. In recent years, it's been like a swing state going back and forth. But Biden pretty clearly won Virginia. There's really no question about that. Glenn Youngkin probably won by 20 to 30 points. Okay, you can say that as much as you want. Glenn Youngkin won by 20 to 30 points. You can say that until you're blue in the face, but it doesn't make it true, and it doesn't mean you just provided us with any evidence, so I'm really not sure where to go from here. I feel like I've made my point with this guy and where his head is at, and like I said, he's got a reasonably big show. I guess he's not on Roku anymore, as far as I know, or on Patreon or YouTube or whatever else, but he's still influential, as you'll see in a minute. Check this clip out. This is from mid-December 2021. 
I was out at a Christmas party on Saturday night, and it was a lot of fun. And Andy Biggs was there. Andy Biggs is a congressman, U.S. Congressman Andy Biggs. I've met him before. Uh, we got a chance to talk uh, in private just for a few minutes. And I had the opportunity to kind of tell him a little bit briefly about my idea for the contract from big government. So, of course, we uh, exchanged uh, phone numbers and all that. And I'm going to reach out with him. And recently he told me that he was talking to President Trump. So this is a very good connection, obviously, having Congressman Andy Biggs, who's close to President Trump. So we'll see what happens. I'm going to try to work with him on legislation. Uh, I've got a lot of really good ideas, and if I can get it in front of him, he can then bring it to the rest of the Freedom Caucus, and who knows what can happen from there. But each and every day, I am always coming up with ways to help make this country better, and I will now be able to share those ideas directly with a member of Congress. He has ideas to make the country better, quote unquote, as he says. What were his ideas about making the country better? I seem to remember something about squeezing Democrat cities dry, basically boycotting them so they can't get any food or water or anything into the city to feed people, right? Something like that. I guess those are the types of ideas that he intends to send to a congressman and possibly as far as Donald Trump. Those are the ideas he has to make this country better. Get rid of Democrats completely. Not the politicians, the people. Get rid of them. That is fucking disturbing. So he just went from having a moderately sized news commentary show to having a connection to a congressman. He has more influence than I'm honestly comfortable with, and we should be keeping a close eye on it. Taylor Morgan, people like Josh Bernstein need to be deplatformed and banned from power, or barred from power, I'm sorry. He largely has been deplatformed. He has. Um, at this point, he's got his own website, but you can't really do much about that. You know, it's essentially like the internet version of standing on a street corner, and, you know, that's freedom of speech, baby, as long as he's not saying anything that directly incites violence, which is debatable. Maybe he is, in which case maybe he should go to jail for that. I, I don't know. But at any rate, he has been deplatformed in large part. Patriot of the West heard the boycott argument before it never happens. Yeah, honestly, if truckers boycotted, they just get fired from their jobs and then they'd hire new people that would do it. You know, when there's a vacuum like that, inevitably the vacuum will get filled by people who want to do the job. Even if it's people who need to do the job, hell, the U.S. government would probably send National Guard in to drive the trucks to cities if that's what it came down to. First of all, not all truckers are Republicans, and second, we would just take over. You know, the U.S. government would fill in the gaps and do what needed to be done to make sure everybody was supplied. Also, um, there's a lot of economic power that comes out of large cities. A lot of trade deals done between different countries. We're, as a country, we're benefited greatly by the existence of New York City, Los Angeles, and other places like that. Big cities are massively useful to the U.S., to us personally. So that boycotting idea is ridiculous at its face. Not only would it never work, it would probably hurt them more than it hurt us.